And four years ago, you were pretty scathing in your criticism of rap and hip hop. On the outside, when I listen to hip hop, I, I don't hear a lot of family-oriented messages. In fact, I hear a lot of messages that are degrading to women. I mm -hmm. hear messages that, that push violence, uh, that are disparaging to the police. Uh, I hear messages very often that seem to treat he relationships between men and women as something disposable or, or glorify mistreatment. Yet here you are, the same Ben Shapiro, the rap hater. Here's a clip from your number one hit. So, first question, how do we get from that first <laughs> clip to the second one? You know, life is a journey, Piers. <laughs> and uh, I've decided to, to take that journey one step at a time. Just never know what life is going to throw your way. If my parents had known when they spent you know, thousands of dollars on 15 years of classical violin lessons with some of the best teachers in the world, <laughs> that my musical career would culminate in me at the top of the world rap charts, I think they, I can only think that they would be incredibly proud. They're just, just so proud that they, they spent all of that time so that I wouldn't at least clap on one and three. So that's, <laughs> that's very, very exciting stuff. And, and yes, I mean, we're taking over the industry from the inside. Tom McDonald is the real talent behind all of that, obviously. Uh, Tom, Tom can actually rap. Tom's actually good at this. Uh, the, the entire joke of me being part of the rap is, I think, the funniest thing in the world. And, and I'm really enjoying a lot of the reaction videos, which people hysterically laughing at the fact that I even attempt such a thing. So, uh, you know, good, good for good for Tom and uh, and good for everybody who's sort of in on the prank because I think there's an actual very good shot that we end up at the Billboard number one. No question, and and I think you should because it's based around facts, which is from your great quote: uh, "Facts don't care about your feelings." I think it's your pinned tweet. It's still it's had gazillions of people who like it, and I've always liked that because it kind of sums up to me the facade of wokery, which is that it's all feeling driven and very rarely fact-driven. And in fact, all the lyrics of this, which, you know, you, you send up rap music very uh, very cleverly, but also in Tom's uh, lyrics, go woke, go broke, no hope, it's pathetic, pro-choice, pronouns, pro-love, your progresses, and so on and so on. Where are the American flags at? Remember when people would hang those, they'd been taken down, replaced with BLM flags or a rainbow and so on. It will hit a nerve with people who feel like their, their country is no longer somewhere that they feel comfortable in or recognise because the woke brigade have made everyone or tried to make everyone feel as so ashamed of what it means to be an American or what it means to be British. I think that's exactly right. It's why Tom has resonated so much as an independent artist. Now, the fact is that there are a lot of systemic kind of barriers to, to entry for, for a song like some of the ones that Tom has made before, which are very right wing, uh, which are very conservative in orientation. Uh, and I think that a lot of the resonance that you're seeing to this is a rejection of many of the values that I'm actually talking about in that clip uh, from one of my shows where I'm talking about the sort of stuff that, that rap is, is promoting. And we're trying to promote the exact opposite. One of the lyrics in the song that, that Tom actually raps is that we are not going to turn your sons into thugs, your daughters into hoes, meaning like we're actually trying to promote social responsibility and, and good citizenship in a rap, which is, again, I think part of the humor, but hopefully some people listen to it and they think, well, maybe, you know, there's an alternative point of view that's worth listening to here. But you know what's always got my goat about it? It's the, it's the ridiculous double standard. And I'll give an example. When John Legend decided to take upon himself to rewrite the lyrics to Baby It's Cold Outside, one of the most innocent songs and videos ever created in music history. And yet he, did, he decided to you know, cleanse it up to make it Me Too friendly, uh, because apparently it was involving sexual assault, although everybody knows it wasn't. Um, but he didn't say a word about any of his rap friends and their truly disgusting, violent, misogynist lyrics. It didn't cross his mind to rewrite one of those because that wouldn't have given him street credibility. That would have damaged him. Whereas playing the, we've got to clean up this shocking baby is cold outside, that was a virtue signaling winner. Oh, absolutely. The attempt to wipe away history, to wipe away old culture. It's old culture is bad, and we have better values now. And that stops right at the front door when it comes to rap. When it comes to hip-hop and rap, 
I mean, any song that you pick up is going to be the most retrograde values that you ever heard. If you're a progressive and you listen to rap, I'm not sure exactly how you square that, frankly, because uh, a lot of the stuff that's promoted in rap is mistreatment of women, treating of women as commodities, drugs, and the, the, the attempts to promote violence. I mean, look, all these messages are really bad, and kids do, in fact, imbibe them. So if we can send that up at the same time that we're doing something successful like this and also do something as, as hilarious as, you know, put a, a you know, Jew Life crew over here at the top of the rap charts, uh, then uh, that, that, that's... That's a win for everybody. There was a touch of the NMNs about you. I've got to say M&Ms about you. The, the, the hoodie, the, the whole look, the movements, everything. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Ben M&M. Ben M&M, <laughs> ben we've got it. I'm joined by the artist who actually crafted the song, uh, Tom McDonald. So, Tom, uh, well, first of all, congratulations on this runaway smash hit. Um, you're actually entitled to celebrate it because you are a bona fide rapper. Ben, I'm not quite so convinced by. Maybe a one-hit wonder. Um, first of all, are you surprised by the backlash or did you predict the backlash and that was one of the reasons you did the song in the first place? Uh, well, I've made a lot of sort of anti-woke anthems over the years and there's always a certain degree of backlash that comes with it. Um, so this one was sort of, you know, a, a lot of my relationship with the audience is call and response. I make a song, people respond in the way that they do. Uh, and then I respond again with the next song. So, uh, you know, facts with Ben is sort of the cap on a long line of anti-woke anthems that have been met with pretty heavy criticism. People uh, in the uh, the black rap community have come out and said that this is just blatant cultural appropriation racism because you're accusing all their music that they produce of being about selling drugs, pushing guns, stripper poles turning our sons into thugs and so on. What do you say to that criticism? Um, I think that there's, you know, there's all types of rappers out there. There's there's black rappers and white rappers and Asian rappers and Indian rappers, all types of rappers. And I don't think that uh, criticizing sort of the status quo of the genre or criticizing the prevalent content of the music, I don't, I don't, I don't agree that there's anything racist about that. What struck me is that there seems to have been more outrage over you guys lampooning uh, this style of rap music than there is about the actual rap music, which often to me gets an extraordinary pass from criticism. And I said to Ben yesterday, when you have John Legend rewriting Baby It's Cold Outside because it's so offensive, um, but doesn't rewrite any of the lyrics of any of his rap friends, there's an obvious double standard. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think that sort of in general, um, over the last 10 to 15 years, there's been uh, very prevalent themes in hip hop, you know, uh, sort of uh, objectifying women and 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 glorifying violence and romanticizing drug abuse and stuff like that. And um, I think that hip hop likes to think of itself as quite a woke genre. Mm. And uh, none of those things seem to quite align with uh, what the the woke mob um, is is standing up and being vocal of again. So I, you know, I think it, it, it's a little bit hypocritical, but you know. Do you think you can be number one on the billboard chart or do you think you may get subtly shadow banned to stop you getting there? Huh? Well, it's happened before. I've had Billboard refuse to count my album sales. Um, I'm completely independent. There's no record label. There's no distribution. There's no marketing team, nothing. I make all of my beats. I write all the songs. My girlfriend shoots the music videos, entirely independent of the music industry. Uh, so, you know, censorship, suppression, shadow banning, is very familiar with all of those things. Like I said, Billboard's refused to count my album sales before. They've removed me off trending charts on YouTube. Um, my distribution company, TuneCore, which is supposed to be the alternative for artists who don't want to sign a major record deal, that they, they are supposed to be able to go to TuneCore and independently release their own music. Um, so I had TuneCore deny release of this song and say that they will not host it in any form uh, because of quote unquote lyrical content. Um, so, you know, I think, <clears throat> I think the buzz is there and I think the press is there and I think that the proof is in the pudding. I have access to the sales numbers as do many other people. Um, so I think it would be pretty hard for Billboard at this point in time to just uh, blatantly um, snub us on the Billboard charts. Can you make one promise finally, Tom, which is if you do get there, you don't 
make as part of your celebration a decision to do a whole a a album with Ben Shapiro? I don't think any of us could stomach that. Probably I can absolutely make that promise. I can absolutely make that promise. <laughs> uh, Tom, congratulations on the success. I love the record because I, I, I see what you're doing with it and I applaud you for it. It's sending up a lot of double standard and I think that's important. Uh, thanks for coming on the show. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me, Pierce. Let me start with you then, uh, Tally. You and I have locked horns before on Twitter, as it used to be. Yeah, you used to troll um, me on Twitter. I think we both yeah. like to express ourselves forcefully and uh, absolutely no problem in doing yes. that. What is, what is your objection yes. to this song? Well, first of all, um, forgive my voice because I'm coming off tour. My voice sounds a little scratchy. Forgive um, it. I sounds pretty cool. I want to congratulate Tom. Okay, cool. I want to congratulate Tom uh, McDonald on his journey in sobriety um, because that's very important to note that part of his story is about his journey in sobriety. I do think it's very cowardly and very racist to blame hip hop for his addiction. Um, as if white people don't have addiction issues. That's first and foremost. But if we're going to talk about the song Facts uh, with Ben Shapiro, let's have a facts versus feelings conversation, which is something that Ben Shapiro always says. Mm. Um, the hook of the song is this ain't rap, which I agree with. It's not rap. It's not hip hop. Has nothing to do with rap. Pierce, you're wrong. The song is not. has nothing to do with rap. Um, this song, he says, money, cars, clothes. We ain't selling drugs. We ain't going to overdose. We ain't pushing guns. We're pro we ain't promoting stripper poles. We won't turn your sons into thugs and your daughters into hoes. This is not facts. He completely erased all conscious hip hop. You see, I got this shirt from Tribe Called Quest, one of the greatest rap groups of all time. He erased what I do. He erased what my, compa what my, what my people do. And uh, most of my friends don't rap about those things. Tom is lying about rap. Well, and, yeah, but hang uh, on. OK, all right. That... Yeah, but hang on, hang on. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm also, I don't mm -hmm. think he's saying all rappers do. In fact, he made a point of saying he doesn't mean all rappers or all hip hop stars. But there's well, no doubt. There's no doubt some on. do. There's he no made, doubt some he, do that. He stuff. made a point. Of course, of course. And there's some country music artists and some heavy metal artists that participate in violent and sexual content. Mm. But I would never make a song. You know what I'm saying? Like he didn't specify that he meant some rap in the song. He specified that on your show right. when you question him. But on the song, he's saying, I'm trying to be offensive and I, I'm hoping to upset people. So guess what? As a black man, black man who does hip hop, I'm offended. If you were trying to offend me, well, then you, you did a good job. To claim that rap or art is a cause of violence and or cause of uh, addiction in his life is irresponsible and hypocritical. When a bomb drops in a, in a nation, it falls on the just and the unjust. I watched a movie called Oppenheimer last night yeah. about a white man who made an atomic bomb that dropped on Japanese people because another white man genocided six million Jewish people. Killers of the Flower Moon is a movie about, a great movie about a white man, white men who go and, and, and pillage and steal from Native American people. Uh, yesterday, a Trump fan from Philly uh, de decapitated his father because his father was voting for Joe mm. Biden. That's like vanilla ISIS. You can't tell me that in the culture that he claims that he stands for, that there's no violence in sex. You can't tell me that. Anyone who supports Trump, like Tom McDonald does in his music, after Trump's mugshot, after January 6th, after this man has been indicted for rape and has 91 felonies, you can't tell me about Blue Lives Matter. You can't tell me that you're about law and order. You're being a hypocrite. OK. Powerful words. Uh, DJ Vlad, you've been sitting there patiently. Uh, what do you make of all this? I mean, I agree uh, somewhat with Taleb Kweli, who's uh, also a friend of mine. Um, the problem is, is that when you talk about rap and you want to talk about the, the gangster lyrics, the violent lyrics, the drug lyrics, when you look at rap as a whole, when you look at the biggest rappers in the world right now, Drake, J. Cole, Kendrick Lamar, these guys aren't rapping about drugs. They're not talking about violence. They're not talking about... Uh, you know, beating women or whatever else. And I think a lot of times when you have these songs that try to generalize these types of things, you know, it kind of, it oversimplifies things and it gives rap in general a bad name. You know, so it's kind of annoying. And, you know, listening to the song, you know, on face value, it doesn't sound like he's really saying anything wrong. But a lot of times when you have these, these sort of white supremacist type of sayings, like, for example, all lives matter, you know, from the outside looking in, of course, all lives matter. But it's really a shot at Black Lives Matter and kind of trying to undermine that type of thing. So I really don't like, you know, what we call in hip hop sneak dissing. And I feel the song has a lot of sneak dissing. Tell him, would it be fair to say that hip hop has moved to a, you know, for want of a better word, a better place? That it, no, it, the biggest stars no longer want to rap about stuff 
that caused all the offence, and actually it's changed. Is that is that accurate? See, see, I don't think that this should be a conversation with three white people and one black person about the state of hip hop and a referendum on hip hop. I think that's the wrong direction to go. One more thing I'm gonna say about Donald Trump is that Tom McDonald is an immigrant. Donald Trump just said immigrants are poisoning our blood here in America. Donald Trump uses uh, white nationalist re rhetoric from Mein Kampf and Hitler all the time, and this guy is a supporter of his. Yeah, this song on, is called on. Facts. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Mm -hmm. Listen, you can have your views about Donald mm -hmm. Trump, that's fine. And, and by the way, you can no, say... No, I said, I'm done, I'm done with that, I'm done with that. No. I'm done with that, that's why I was going to the I song. I get it, but the idea that I'm not allowed to, or v DJ Vlad isn't allowed to, comment about hip-hop or rap is ridiculous. I didn't say that. I didn't you, say you basically that. said DJ it. Vlad... It, no, I didn't. Let me let me be clear. DJ Vlad is a controversial figure in our culture. A lot of people accuse him of being a culture vulture. That is not a, a criticism that I personally agree with, although I do understand the argument. I work with, if, if unbeknownst to a lot of people, I've done more songs with white rappers than any rapper you can name, any black rapper you can name. My next single is featuring Mac, uh, Mac Miller, Rest in Peace. I've worked with Mac Lamore. I've worked with Ari the Rugged Man. There's no problem with white people in hip hop. There's a problem with racist white people in hip hop. Mm. And Tom McDonald's song is racist and is factually incorrect. And I, could, and I could break down what's factually incorrect in the song Facts, and I could break down how Ben Shapiro started his career by saying rap, rap isn't music. So you got somebody featured on your song who tweeted in 2019, fact, rap isn't music, and mm. if you think it is, you're stupid. Well, that person is clearly not an anti-racist, intelligent person. Tom McDonald owes the hip-hop community an apology for putting someone on a song that in tw tw 20, 2009, writing for a white nationalist uh, site, Breitbart, wrote an article saying rap is crap. These people don't respect hip-hop. Tom McDonald's making rap for people... Well, I think you're missing... Like uh, look, I, I played some of this stuff back to Ben Shapiro yesterday. I think you're slightly missing the point. He's, he's lampooning the world of rap and hip-hop. Oh, you I'm think not missing the point. You think there's, a, the you think there's a lot of hypocrisy I, and I'm double standard clear. there. I'm very clear that Ben Shapiro is is lampooning hip hop. I'm very clear about mm. that. I'm not I'm not under any but misconception about But even you, Tanner, look, this. even you must admit when mm -hmm. John Legend goes out of his way to rewrite the lyrics to mm -hmm. "Baby It's Cold Outside" because of the Me Too mm -hmm. campaign, because he he thinks it's about sexual assault, but doesn't rewrite mm -hmm. any lyrics from any hip hop or rap song in the last 50 years. Mm -hmm. You got to admit there is a ridiculous mm -hmm. double standard there, isn't there? I totally I couldn't I couldn't disagree more. I completely disagree really? with that. Really? Because I think you're removing all, I think you're removing all social, political, and historical context that goes into creating hip hop and equating it with the social, political context that you goes into creating a Christmas You genuinely think Baby song. Is Cold Outside is, is more offensive than anything that the I hip hop... I didn't say that. Well, you I implied didn't, it. I didn't say that. I said, no, I didn't imply it. I said, you are removing context to make a false equivalency. No, the context is very straightforward. Mis John Legend chose to rewrite the lyrics to Baby It's Cold no, Outside, I, I understand. but he didn't Pierce, rewrite Pierce, any Pierce. of the offensive, misogynist, violent Pierce, lyrics of his friends in the rap world. Pierce, I get, I get that that's how you feel, but your feelings are It's not a facts. feeling, it's a fact. And the facts is... Oh, no, that's not... Well, it's, it's not a fact that it's a it's problem It's a fact that, that John Legend that. hasn't rewritten any lyrics of people in the hip-hop world. And it's not a... Pierce Morgan, John Legend is not your slave. He doesn't have to do what He's you He's not my slave, but he can be a hypocrite, and he then, was. Then, 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 then let's he... stop talking about John Legend, because this is not about John Legend. Let's no, talk about you... the song Facts. All right, but you... Let's stop deflecting. I'm stop not deflecting. deflecting. And let's talk about the song Facts. OK. OK, so can we get back to the Hang song on. Facts? Hang on. Let me, let me okay, bring in DJ first, Vlad. He's been very... Lyric... 